everyone, my name is James Smith and I'm the principal here at Discovery College. This video is a quick guide to some of the campus arrangements that we will have in place when we start class resumption in a few days time. And we're hoping that by sending this video to all of our students and all of our parents, we can really paint a picture of what your day is going to be like and what things will be uh, arranged on campus to help keep you safe and make learning a really positive experience while you are here on campus. So just by way of a, a brief introduction, we'll start at the start of a student's day. And a couple of key things that will happen each morning, uh, we will be publishing a full set of guidance around health and safety and what students and parents will need to do. The two key headlines will be that every student at home will need their temperature checked. And we'll be issuing a temperature log book uh, as soon as students arrive with us on campus. And from their second arrival onwards, we'll be needing to, for them to bring this book in and to record their temperature on days when they are in and also on days when they're not in campus, including weekends, following CHP guidance. So temperature checking in the morning is really important. We know that most parents doing that will use an infrared thermometer and the government guidance says that if the temperature is over 37.5, you need to make sure that your child is staying home uh, on that day. The other thing that's really important is that every student is provided with a face mask and that's going to be the responsibility of our families to make sure that students bring that face mask because again in order to keep every student safe all of us will be wearing face masks upon class resumption. Now the other things that are going to happen will begin when students arrive here on the DC campus and to model this I have the wonderful primary leadership team and some of our team leaders who you can see are really dressed for the part. And what we're going to do now is just do a quick walkthrough of what happens at the school gate. When students arrive, they'll see clearly signposted five lanes representing different year groups entrances. The youngest will be on the right, the oldest on the left. Students need to stick to the correct lane. When they go through the lane, our staff will be on hand to complete two forms of checking. From the second day of attendance, students need to hold up their logbook to show that it has been completed and signed. And every day they need to be temperature checked by our staff senior staff will be on hand to assist. Now we've made a lot of effort to make sure that this process is smooth and does not take long. So as part of that, we will be able to avoid large gatherings here in the foyer. Students will simply proceed into school, and for those students who would normally do so, they will swipe in using our swipe card stations as normal. Now the other thing that our staff will be checking here in the lanes is to make sure that every student that passes them has filled in a mandatory health declaration and they'll have the details of any students for whom the families haven't been able to do that yet. So one really important appeal here is for every family to try and sign that declaration and for us to do that whether we are able to send students on campus or perhaps because maybe a family is overseas and not able to make it in person, we still need that family to complete that declaration. It means that our staff have a manageable list of people who might just need to finish that process off when class resumption. Uh, is in place. Any student who hasn't completed the health declaration won't be able to go through the lanes. They'll go around here to the front and to reception and from there of course we will try and contact parents to make sure that we can resolve things. So as students proceed through the lanes, obviously the vast majority of students will have a temperature which allows them to enter into the school. If any student has a temperature which is too high, they will then go over to the nurse's office and I'll take you there now. So this is our nurse's office and this will be the location that any student will be brought to if on our infrared thermometer checks on the front gate they have a temperature which is too high. And here in the nurse's office you can see it's a separated and safe space where students will be able to receive medical attention and from here if the, the final temperature check indicates that they do need to go home for that day then we'll be making contact with parents to make sure that they can be, uh, be, be sent home safely. Now, in order to make sure that the information we're using is absolutely as precise as it can be, we will be using a different thermometer, an in-ear thermometer in this location. And the government guidance we have for the particular type of thermometer we're using is that the threshold we should be adhering to for this final check is 38.0 degrees. So if a student is above that temperature, that's what tells us that they do need to travel home for that day and obviously uh, for, for follow-up uh, medical attention potentially in that situation as well. So this final check will be used to determine that. Now the next section of the video is going to be with my colleague Chris Barr, who's going to be telling you about what learning spaces will look like for our primary students. Good morning everyone and welcome back to school. We're looking forward to having children return as of Monday the 25th. Um, as the children enter the school, as you've seen by Mr. Smith explaining just previously, after you've done your temperature check and you have um, swiped in and registered, you'll make your way to the classroom. 
We're looking forward to you entering the classroom where you will drop your bag off and the teacher will be waiting for you. As you come into the classroom, once you've dropped your bag off, the teacher will be waiting for you at the door. Students are going to be learning in two classrooms when we return. One classroom will be your homeroom that you know that you already know, and the second classroom will be the one next door. The classrooms are set up for 15 children in each room with all the tables set at appropriate social distancing. So it'll be great for students to be able to access their own resources um, and to be able to engage in the learning with the children that are in, in their current class. While some of the things are gonna look a little bit different, we're hoping the learning and the opportunities to build relationships is going to be the same as before. We're looking forward to seeing the children come to school in their nice masks and ready to learn um, and be able to see everyone and play with each other at recess times, which will also look a little bit different, but we'll give you more information in the not too distant future. Can't wait to see everyone. Right, so, similar to primary school, what you'll find is when secondary students arrive, once you've swiped in, once you've had your temperature checked and you're ready to come up the stairs, you'll head off to your learning teams. Now, one thing to mention is that your rooms might be slightly different in terms of location. So please look out for updates in your timetables, which will give you a sense of where to go for your learning teams and also the subjects. And I'll explain that a bit more as we go in and see what the classrooms look like. So as we go through, you'll see that the classrooms do look very similar to primary school in terms of layout. Our aim is for each teaching class to be assigned two rooms as a home base. So rather than you actually moving around the school between subjects, for the majority of your subjects, you'll be in the same two rooms which will be assigned on your timetable. And as you can see, the layout that we have ensures social distancing. There's at least one metre between each chair, but the layout also enables us to have some level of collaboration. So look out for your timetables, spot where you're going to be, and then for the majority of your sessions, you'll be in the same place, and the teacher will come to you. To help that happen, we need to build in some transition times, and that will become evident on your timetable as well. The other thing I should mention as well, is that we'll revert to our usual schedule. Lunchtime will be slightly later, and we'll be back to our usual 1.30 lunch with two, sorry, with one lesson following lunch, and back to our uh, previous schedule. This will also apply for your online learning. So when you're at home, you will find that you have a block of two lessons, followed by a break, a block of three lessons, lunch, and then block six. We'll also reintroduce learning teams for each day. So when you're in school, you'll start the day with your learning team session. So let's have a look at some of the specialist spaces because that's the one point in which you will move. If you have subjects like art, drama, music, or science, uh, or design during the day, you will actually still go and use your specialist learning space. So let's go and have a look at those. So as you can see, here's one of our art studios. We still have the opportunity for collaboration. And so at any point in your timetable where you need to access resources that you might need in something like an art studio, or a science lab, you can still do that. So your learning continues as you might expect. So we're very happy to see that our layouts will facilitate all of your timetable, all of your curriculum, and we can fulfill your learning needs, whatever they might be in terms of art, science, design, music, and drama. One thing that we might note is that you still might need to spread across two classrooms within the studios, depending on your class size. But your teachers will be able to advise you on where to go if it does change. Right, so we're looking forward to receiving you back very shortly and we're very excited um, for the secondary students to come back onto campus. We know that you're gonna be on campus one day and learning on, online another day, but we want to be able to demonstrate to you how we can set up your learning so that it carries on as usual as possible under the current social distancing requirements. So we're really excited to see you soon. I'm here to talk about the arrangements we've made uh, in the cafeteria for our students when they return, um, in line with all regulations, uh, health and safety requirements. We've set up our three levels of uh, cafeteria um, to make sure that the students are seated one metre apart at all times. 
um, charcoals will not be serving any food on campus um, for the rest of the term. So students and staff will be asked to bring all their drinks and food from home. They will be eating in all three levels of the cafeteria uh, at all times. Primary is going to be split into two sections and secondary is also going to be split into two lunch sessions. Um, before and after each session, uh, the uh, floor and the benches and the tabletops and the chairs will all be disinfected to make sure that they're clean, ready for the next uh, session of students to come in. So you can see that we've marked the tables one metre apart, ensuring, ensuring that students uh, stick to that regime and we'll have staff on duty at the same time to assist the students um, with any questions that may have.